Uh, my name is Michael Grandy. I'm a professor at Providence College. And uh, today we're going to talk about job order costing. And we're working with the uh, Kimmel 7th edition textbook, and specifically chapter 15 as it relates and talks about job order costing. We're going to take a look at uh, two problems. We're going to look at exercise 15. Point five, so that's chapter 15, it's exercise number five. And then we're gonna look at exercise 15.8, so exercise number eight. So let me, um, let me pull up and share my screen with you. We can look at the problem and also talk about the solution. So here's, here's the first problem, it's a very straightforward little problem. And it says here that, uh, company applies manufacturing overhead to jobs on the basis of machine hours used. Overhead costs are estimated to total $300,000 for the year and machine usage is estimated at 125,000 hours. So there's your estimated information. For the year, $322,000 of overhead costs are incurred and 130,000 hours used. So this is a great little problem because it gives you both estimated and actual information. You need to know what to do with each one of these things. So item A, compute the manufacturing overhead rate for the year. This is also known as the predetermined overhead rate. So let's remember the formula for the predetermined overhead rate. It is the total estimated manufacturing overhead dollars divided by the total estimated activity base, all estimated information. Going back to the first paragraph, it says overhead costs are estimated to be 300,000 for the year. The machine usage is estimated to be 125,000 hours. So we we'll look at the first part of the solution. Predetermined overhead rate, there's the formula. Is two dollars and forty cents per machine hour. Item B: What is the amount of underapplied or overapplied manufacturing overhead at December thirty-first? So now this is asking you to have a good understanding of the manufacturing overhead general ledger account. On a T account basis, the debits in that account represent actual manufacturing overhead dollars. The credits represent manufacturing overhead applied to work in process. So here in this problem, they told you for the year $322,000 of overhead costs were incurred. That's the actual cost. That's gonna be the debit in the manufacturing overhead account. The credit is manufacturing overhead applied. In the formula for manufacturing overhead applied equals the predetermined overhead rate, which we just calculated, multiplied times the actual activity, which is 130,000 hours. Let's take a look at that part of the solution. The actual costs, 322,000. Manufacturing overhead applied, the predetermined overhead rate of $2.40 times 130,000 hours of $312,000. So I've asked you to always look at the manufacturing overhead account and calculate a net debit or a net credit. Here, our actual costs are greater than the amount that we transferred out. We have a net debit. That means we have underapplied manufacturing overhead. That means there is overhead left over, did not include enough cost. Let's look at the last item. It says, prepare the adjusting entry to assign the underapplied or overapplied to the cost of goods sold. So they use the word adjusting entry. Now, you remember from financial accounting that an adjusting entry is it affects a balance sheet account and an income statement account, but never cash. And they're telling you which account. So you're gonna, you've got two accounts already named. You have to zero out the manufacturing overhead account 
and they said to close it to the cost of goods sold. So if we look back at our manufacturing overhead T account, we have a net debit. In order to bring it to zero, we need to credit it. So here's your journal entry. Credit manufacturing overhead for $10,000, and they told you to close it out to cost of goods sold. So that's the solution. And again, this solution, as all solutions, are upon Sakai. Let's take a look at another problem. This one has a little bit more going on here. This is exercise 15 8. Let's read it. Eno's printing company uses a job order cost system. The following data summarize the operations related to the first quarter's production. Materials purchased on account, $192,000. Factory wages incurred, $87,300. Number two, materials requisitioned and factory labor used. So here in this little chart, they're giving you the materials that are assigned to each job. That's direct materials. They're giving you the labor assigned to each job. That's direct labor. And when it comes to general factory use, that's the indirect materials and the indirect labor. Item three, manufacturing overhead costs incurred on account. 49,500, depreciation on factory equipment. That's gonna be a component of manufacturing overhead because of factory. Depreciation of the company's office building. Because it's office, it is a non-manufacturing cost, does not go in manufacturing overhead. They also tell you, item six, manufacturing overhead rate is 90% of direct labor. That's the predetermined overhead rate. They just told you the predetermined overhead rate is 80% of your direct labor cost. And again, the direct labor cost is in the chart above where they have factory labor assigned to jobs A20, 21, and 22, and 23. Lastly, it says jobs completed during the quarter, 20, 21, and 23. 22 is incomplete. Only those three jobs are complete. What are they asking you to do? Prepare entries to record the operations summarized above. Prepare a schedule showing the individual cost elements and total costs for each job in item seven. Those are the jobs that are completed. So let's look at the journal entries here. The first one is to what? They said they acquired raw materials of 192,000. Secondly, they said in that item one, and factory wages incurred 87,300, which includes both direct and indirect. Because see where they put it? They put it in that temporary account called factory labor factory wages payable. Item two, we need to refer back to the chart. So the first item is for direct materials. Let's go back here, let's look at the chart. You look at the, you look at the materials that are assigned to jobs A, 20, 21, 22, and 23. If you add those four numbers up, and only those four numbers, that gives you the direct materials of 153,530. Materials, direct materials assigned to a job go to work in process. The indirect materials go to manufacturing overhead. So they said general factory use, that represents indirect materials of 4470. So you got a total of 158,000, but it's broken down between direct and indirect. So you can see the direct goes to work and process, the indirect goes to manufacturing overhead, the credit, it comes from where? The other inventory account called 
raw materials inventory. Second part of this entry deals with labor costs, both direct and indirect. And again, if we go to this chart here, the wages that are assigned to each job, that are traceable to each job, represent direct labor. If you total up the amounts assigned to A20, 21, 22, and 23, that's gonna come up to exactly $80,000. This general factory use here of 7,300 represents indirect labor. See the journal entry, right? Direct labor goes in work in process for 80,000. Indirect labor goes to manufacturing overhead, general factory use, 7,300, and look, the credits to factory labor. Go back up here to the entry in item one. You had a debit to factory labor. Here's a credit to factory labor. It zeroes out, right? Debits minus credits. Item three, manufacturing overhead costs incurred. These are my other factory costs, and other factory costs go where? Manufacturing overhead. Item four, depreciation on factory equipment. Because it says factory, it's a component of manufacturing overhead. So the entry is a debit to manufacturing overhead and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Let's contrast that with item five. Item five says depreciation on the company's office building. Because it says office, it's a non-manufacturing cost. It's a period cost. It does not belong in manufacturing overhead. The debit is depreciation expense, 14.3. Please pay attention to the differences between number four and number five. Number four, factory equipment. Number five, office equipment. Let's look at number six. Manufacturing overhead rate is 90% of direct labor cost. Manufacturing overhead applied equals the predetermined overhead rate multiplied times actual activity. The predetermined overhead rate is 90% of direct labor. Direct labor was $80,000. Those are the amounts assigned to jobs A20, 21, 22, and 23. 90% of 80,000, 72,000. Debit work in process, credit manufacturing overhead. Item seven, let's go back and read it. Jobs completed. There's only three jobs that were completed. 20, 21, and 23. So what we need to do now is come up with the total cost, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead for those jobs that are completed. The direct materials from these items, where do they come from? comes from this chart right here, right? Materials assigned to 20, 21, and 23. 35,240, for example. 35,240, right? Direct labor, again, comes from that chart that they gave you. Job A20, 18,000. Look at the chart, 18,000. Now, pay careful attention here. Manufacturing overhead. Manufacturing overhead is what? 90% of direct labor. So you need to look at job A20. 90% of 18,000 is $16,200. The total cost of job A20, direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead, 69440 Look at job A21. Materials and labor come from the chart that's given to you in the problem. Manufacturing overhead is what? 90% of direct labor. Direct labor for job A21, 
22,000 times 90%, 19,800. Do the same for job A23, which is completed. So the cost of the completed jobs is 240,930. You have to do what? You have to transfer it from work in process to finished goods. Increase finished goods inventory, decrease work in process for the total amount, 240,930. Okay, so those are the problems from chapter 15, job order costing. Thank you.